Hello learners, I am Dr. Akash Singh. In previous chapter, we learned about library staff uh, uh, at various level. In this chapter, we will learn about the library users. So, uh, because uh, the library uh, has its entity just due to its users, so this chapter is very important for uh, the library learners. The objective of any library irrespective of its type or size is to meet the information requirement of its users is the first primary object, uh, objective of this chapter. All the activities of a library from selection of resources to their organization, storage and dissemination are carried out keeping in view the user's requirement. User satisfactions become the ultimate goal of any library. Libraries therefore need to access their services to ensure that the best use is being made of the available resources. They need to find out if the services provided are appropriate to the need of the users reaching the target group and users opinion about the services. For this library regularly carry, carried out user study. So, this chapter we will discuss a number of things in this chapter. Uh, in this lesson, uh, you will study the methods and techniques of library user studies. You will also be exposed to type of user orientation and user education program. Search training programs not only create awareness, but also make users independent. So, the objective of this chapter covers a list uh, different type of users and their information need state the methods and techniques of accessing users information requirements, illustrate methods of information gathering habits of users, design questionnaires for gathering information requirement of the users, describing the purpose and methods of user education and learn about user orientation and user education program offered by the library. So now we will discuss about user group and information need. As you are aware, an academic library serves the student and teacher of a specific school, college or university. Special library attached to a uh, research and development organization serve personal engagement in research and development activities and a public library serves the local residents of a region. Thus, each library serves a specific user group. Each user group needs information for uh, some purpose or other. Information needs vary from person to person. So, uh, on the basis of various user group, uh, a library uh, basically is created to serve to students, teachers, researchers, professionals, planners, plus policy makers, manager, business people, communicator, intermediaries, technician supervisors, general publics. The table in uh, the next slide shows information needs of user groups and purpose for which they need information. Like a student need information for study, project report, general interest, uh, a teacher need information for teaching and research and you know researchers need information for research and development in a specific discipline, professionals need information for technical information uh, for uh, pursuing career. Planners and policy makers also need information to frame policies and take decisions. Apart from that, managers and business people needs information uh, knowing market trends and regulatory information. Communicators uh, and intermediaries need information to create awareness in masses about new processes, products, etc. Technicians and supervisors and uh, professionals in industries and business, they also need information for problem uh, solving reasons. And the general public, they need information for vocation related information and general interest information. Of all the user groups, researchers are the most expensive users of library resources and services. They need information to keep up to date, to find new areas of research, to avoid duplication of research and to solve problem. A large number of user surveys have been conducted to ascertain information needs of all category of library users including common men. On the basis of these survey, we can identify four type of information user needs, which are current information need, exhaustive information need, catching up information need, 
and everyday information need. Uh, Let us we discuss all these needs uh, in detail. Information needs usually vary from person to person. Beside this, a user may have varied needs at different point of time. When users need latest development in their area of interest on regular basis, the need is known as current information need. When users want uh, to have exhaustive information on a particular topic, the need is known as exhaustive information need. This type of information need is useful required by the usually required by the researchers. Everyday uh, information need is uh, for a specific information required by users in their day to day activities. The need is generally for factual information normally available in standard reference books. And uh, the catching up uh, information need it arises when a user not conversant with a particular subject field uh, and uh, he or she require an account of overall development of that subject in short and compact form. To meet information need of their user, library provides a wide range of services which you have studied in lesson 12, 13 and 14. Now uh, we are going to discuss about user study. A user study uh, is basically is uh, framed uh, to assess the information need of the user, to know uh, unfulfilled information needs, to find out the use of library resources and services, to know user's opinion about the library collection, staff and services and finally to ascertain need for a new services. Library uh, periodically conducts user studies to ascertain the need and opinion of users. The user studies also help the library to know unfulfilled information need, find out the use of library resources and services, to know users opinion about the library collection, staff and services and ascertain the need of a new services. User studies are performed in the library with two methods, uh, one is the direct method and second one is the indirect method. Libraries use various methods to carry out user studies. These methods are direct and indirect method as I have already explained. Direct methods are based on establishing contact with the users and active invol involvement of the users under study. While indirect methods are based on library's own analysis of its record and other sources without the involvement of the user under study. Now we will discuss about the indirect method of the user study. Many libraries depend on analysis of their records and statistics as uh, uh, previously I uh, explained uh, like circulation record, reservation record, reference query files etc to access the information requirement of their user. These methods are known as indirect methods. Library records provide useful information. For example, records of references, questions and literature search can give an insight into the type of queries received, type of document used and time taken to answer a question etc. Similarly, circulation record can be analyzed to determine the activities of the library as well as to determine the reading habits of library users. Indirect methods provides useful information. However, for finding uh, views of the users, indirect methods are not appropriate. For example, indirect methods cannot provide information related to users view about library services and his her attitude, opinion or preferences or behavior as an individual. It thus become necessary to observe or question them directly. So for the direct query to the users, direct method is applied. Direct methods of user studies involve participation of the users under study. Most of the general methods and techniques of social surveys such as questionnaire, interviews, diaries, observation, etc. are direct uh, are used in direct methods. Now we will discuss about the questionnaire in detail. A questionnaire is a structured schedule of questions intended to be answered in writing. Questionnaires are a useful way to seek the opinion of users over widely scattered area. The most common form of questionnaire is the postal questionnaire. Although questionnaire may also be given by hand or may be sent via email or online but mostly commonly used way is uh, nowadays is the postal questionnaire. 
a number of type of questions are also asked in a questionnaire like questions on fact or opinion, close question, ranking question and open ended question. A questionnaire is a structured schedule of question intended to be answered in writing. Questionnaires are a useful way to seek the opinion of users over widely scattered area. The most common uh, form of questionnaire is the postal questionnaire although a questionnaire may also be uh, given by hand or maybe in any other form. Now we will discuss about designing of questionnaire. A designing of questionnaire contains a number of steps like questions wording, leading and loaded questions, length of the questionnaire, order of questionnaire, questionnaire's format, accompanying letters. Designing a questionnaire involves skillful translation of objectives of the study into a set of questions. Questionnaire should be designed carefully. If the questionnaire is poor, the result of the study could be useless. A good questionnaire is brief, attractive, asks unambiguous uh, questions, interesting and easy to complete. The following should be kept in mind while designing a questionnaire. Questionnaire should be clearly phrased. Avoid ambiguous, ambiguous term. Ambiguity uh, can arise in two ways. First, in the use of individual words, and secondly, in the sentence construction. Avoid loose terms like usually, sometime, rarely, frequently, etc. Avoid leading and loaded questions. For instance, if you prepare a question with the phrase such as many people do such and such, you may encourage the respondent for giving answer. For example, the following question is a leading question and should be avoided. Most people find reference staff in the library helpful. Do you? Yes or no? The above question uh, may be reframed as follows. Do you find the reference staff in the library helpful? Yes or no? In general, questionnaire should be as short as possible without compromising the aim of the study. Here the pressure to conform toward a favorable view is removed. Start the questionnaire with a question that will put the respondent at ease and make him willing to complete the rest of the questionnaire. First question should be easy to complete. If possible, try to begin with closed questions rather than open-ended questions. As uh, closed questions require less effort by the respondent and also help to clarify what the study is about. Try to ask questions in logical order. Questions on the same topic should be grouped together and when the topic to be changed, the respondent should be alerted with the introductory phrase. Be confident, make clear where and uh, how response is to be given. Leave adequate space for responses. Number all the question in continuous sequence and use letter to identify subparts and do not split question and its response category between page. All questionnaire should be sent out with an um, accompanying letter, identify the organization, conducting the study, purpose of the study and its social usefulness in the letter. Explain why the respondent is important by simply describing the way he was chosen. Respondent should be told whom to contact if he has some query. A phone number uh, should be included, indicate how the results of the survey would be communicated and thank respondent for their cooperation. A questionnaire can be used to avoid when population to be reached is large and widely scattered geographically. It is possible to determine in advance what questions need to be asked in the study. Resources uh, for data collection are limited. Return uh, is never complete as normal only 50% of the mailed questionnaire are returned at times questionnaires are uh, misinterpreted. To guard against misinterpretation it is advisable to pretest and check the questionnaire on limited subject. Another way to guard uh, against misinterpretation is to supply a field in model questionnaire along with the questionnaire. As the uh, interviewer is not uh, present during the study, the tendency is to give the ideal or best answer which may affect the finding. 
some respondents may be uh, unable to complete the questionnaire due to reading and writing illiteracy, language problem or any other reason. Now uh, we will discuss about the interview, the second direct method of user study. An interview involves verbal interaction between the interviewer and one or more respondent. It is either conducted face to face or by telephone. It is usually conducted with one individual at a time, but it may also be done with a group of individuals. So uh, three types of uh, interviews are there. Uh, first one is a structured interview, second one is the unstructured interview and uh, the third one is the semi-structured interview. Here uh, the questions, uh, this order and response categories are decided in advance. Structured interview is based on an interview schedule which is in the form of a questionnaire. As there is a, a consistency in the topics covered, responses to the questions can be compared and aggregated. Data analysis is also simple. Questions and answers cannot be uh, adopted if uh, they seem inappropriate. Information which does not fit into uh, predetermined category, uh, respondents may have to distort uh, their views in order to choose a response. In semi-structured uh, interview, here some uh, questions are structured and some are open-ended. Often, uh, often structured in questions are used to obtain factual information such as age, number of books borrowed, employment, etc. Open-ended questionnaire are used when uh, opinion, explanation or description of behavior or events are sought. Here, uh, the design of an interview schedule involves the use of principles similar to those used in the questionnaire. In unstructured interview, it closely resembles natural conversation. Neither the questions nor the response categories are determined in advance. Questions emerge from the interview as it develops. This method uh, has great degree of flexibility. Uh, respondents are free to express themselves in language and suits them. Uh, they are not obliged to fit uh, their ideas into someone else category. However, analysis of responses is difficult as there is no consistency in the coverage of the topic and the amount of data generated. So uh, now we will discuss about the advantage of the interview. Misinterpretation of the questions can be avoided uh, as the interviewer is present to uh, provide the correct interpretation. Uh, the response is 100% uh, as not like the question method uh, where response in variably poor. To reach a sizable sample, interview method is time consuming and costly. Now we are going to discuss the disadvantage of the interview uh, method. To reach a sizable sample, interview method is time consuming and costly. This method is costlier than questionnaire method because the inter interviewer need to be trained. Interviewers need to establish a rapport with the interviewees, especially the reluctant ones to get the answer skillfully. Now we are going to discuss about the diary method. In this method, individuals under study are asked to maintain a detailed record of particular information activity. Activities like searching for information, actual reading, discussion with the colleagues, library use, etc. can be recorded for a given period of time. In this method, individuals uh, under study are asked to maintain a detailed record of particular information activity. Activities like searching for information, actual reading, discussion with the colleagues, library use, etc. can be recorded for the given period of time. To facilitate the work of recording and the final analysis of data, data diary forms are supplied to the individual. So uh, we are going to discuss about the advantage of diary method. This method provides a useful starting point for a semi-structured interview as diary uh, provides a check list of topics to be covered in the interview. Diaries can be used to record information related activities of the individuals which are otherwise difficult to observe such as reading habits at home. As this method involves maximal, maximum efforts on the part of the individuals, they may not record their activities completely. The tendency will be greater if the period of record uh, keeping is longer. Now we will discuss the another direct method, it's the observation. Observation 
by uh, others is a way of collecting data in a purposeful and systematic manner about the behavior of an individual or group at a specific time and place. The techniques of observation involves uh, watching and recording actions as they occur. Distinguishing features of observation is that uh, information required by the investigation investigator is obtained directly. Observation method in the library is used uh, by various ways like the use of library catalog, use of reading room facility, use of books and periodicals in the display area, activities in the reference and uh, query desk, the number of users approaching the library staff. Observation method uh, is uh, useful and it is used for uh, the, the activities which are directly done by the users. So now we will discuss about the disadvantage of the observation. The method is not suitable for collecting data on people's attitudes and opinions. There is a possibility of influencing the individual's behavior if they know they are being observed. Methods are not suitable for recording past events. Now we will discuss uh, the next uh, direct method, it is the user training. Uh, user training is uh, the most important part in a library for informing about the collection and the using of all the resources of a library. User study conducted during 1950s <coughs> provided an insight uh, into the user's information requirements and also revealed that existing library resources and services are not fully utilized by the users. Library professionals stressed the need for training the users so that they may use the library resources to their benefit. In the years uh, which followed, uh, the need for library instructions in academic libraries was widely accepted and uh, means for implementation were being followed. Presently, it would be difficult to find any library that is not engaged in some activities or program concerned with user study. A wide range of training programs are provided by the libraries. Uh, these training programs uh, aim to help the user to find and search information independently. So such uh, user training may be the user orientation programs, bibliographic instructions, user education and information literacy. Now uh, we will discuss uh, in detail about the user training. Depending upon the type of instructions, the program may be user orientation, bibliographical instructions or user education program. Let us study what each training program offers. In user education, a library, particularly academic library, organize user orientation or user initiation programs for the new students at beginning of the academic session. Basic aim of the user orientation programs is to introduce the library and its services to the new users. Such programs acquaint the user to the library and its uh, facilities such as general rules and regulations of the library, collection of the library and its location, catalog of the library and how to use it, lending and borrowing facilities and about references and information services of the library. These programs are uh, in the form of a lecture by the librarian followed by a tour of the library or a brochure uh, containing all the information or an audio visual kit that uh, introduces the library to the new comer. Uh, now we will discuss about the bibliographical instructions. Training programs on bibliographical instructions uh, concentrate on teaching uh, the participants with uh, basic literature search techniques to find required information are performed in libraries. Uh, the training courses uh, normally uh, cover structure of the literature of a subject. Uh, it can be different types of documents uh, that are available and uh, their information characterize. The training uh, include how uh, to plan a search that will give best result in shortest possible time. Availability of uh, computerized databases and search techniques th uh, through them uh, and a practical experience on literature search on a specific uh, information uh, are some example of bibliographical instructions. Such training programs are normally offered in universities and research organizations. Now we will discuss about the user education. User education is a broader concept. It is an uh, educational activity which is uh, concerned with creating awareness about, uh, among the students about the value of information, motivating them to use library resources uh, for uh, their research purposes, 
Here, the user training programs are designed based on the course curriculum of the target audience. At times, class teachers are also involved in preparing practical exercises. Such activities develop skill in the users to find and search information independently for study, research and uh, recreational purpose. Now we will discuss about the information literacy. Uh, this is also a very interesting uh, thing in a library. Information literacy is a recent concept. US Forum on Information Literacy defines information literacy as the ability to know when there is need for information to be able to identify, locate, evaluate and uh, effectively use that information for the issue or problem in hand. Information literacy empowers people in all walks of life too, like it helps in identifying which information is needed, helps in understand how information is organized, it helps in identify the best source of information for a given need, it helps in loc locating these sources. It also helps in evaluating the source critically and using and creating information effectively to achieve their personal, social, occupational and educational goal. Information literacy is important because we are surrounded by information in all format, particularly digital information on the web. Uh, not all uh, created information is equal, some is authoritative current and reliable, while some is biased, outdated, misleading and false. Information literacy completely enable people to judge that the information uh, they are using is accurate and is from a reliable source. Library professionals can play an active role in information literacy program of parent institution by selecting, organizing and preserving information in all formats like print as well as non-print. Libraries and library professionals can play an active role in information literacy programs of parental uh, institutions uh, by selecting, organizing and preserv preserving information in all formats like print as well as non-print, introducing information techniques and acting as consultant and facilitators in the use of information technology. So learners. Uh, now uh, we will discuss in brief what we have learned in this lesson. User studies, uh, in this lesson we have discussed, user studies are conducted by the libraries to know the information requirements of the users and to find out the use of library resources and services. There are two methods of user studies, the direct method and the indirect method. User studies have helped to identify four type of information needs of the users current information need, exhaustive information need, everyday information need and catching up information need. User training programs provided by the libraries aim to help the users to use existing resources and services fully and make them independent in searching and using informations. Thank you learners for being with us. Now we will meet in the next module.